and uh, thank you for joining us here today. My name is Aideen Murphy and um, for anyone who, who doesn't know me, I'm the Tax and Practice Partner with Barden in Cork. Um, so I'm delighted to welcome everyone here today to the Barden and Cassi Life and Work After Your Training Contract webinar. So just before we, we kick off, we might do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, on entry, everyone will have been muted and your camera is turned off. So you might just double check that that's the case for you. Um, also, if you do have any questions throughout the course of the webinar, we'd be absolutely delighted to get them. Um, and please just use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. And I'll do my very best to ask Fiona any questions you might have at the end of our conversation. Hopefully time will allow. Um, finally, we're also recording the session. So just if anyone does want to obtain a copy, um, you'll be able to afterwards. Okay, so time to kick off, I think. So i um, really delighted and thrilled that we have Fiona Harrington here joining us today for a chat. Uh, Fiona is Head of Tax with Cartroller. So I'll just give you a little bit of a background on Cartroller first, I think, just to, to get us started. So Cartroller is the leading B2B provider of car rental and mobility solutions to the gr global travel industry. Cartroller brings opportunities to life through an online marketplace connecting partners, customers and mobility suppliers. Cartroller's end-to-end -end technology platform expands their airline and travel partners offerings to their customers, creating substantial ancillary revenue opportunities. Cartroller provides an unrivaled breadth and depth of content worldwide, including car rental, private airport transfer and ride hailing services. So that leads me on nicely to Fiona. Um, so we are absolutely thrilled, as I said, to be welcoming Fiona here today. And just to give you a little intro, um, Fiona completed a Bachelor of Business and Accounting in Cork Institute of Technology. She then went on to do a Master's of Arts in Accounting in Athlone Institute of Technology. And then Fiona joined KPMG as tax trainee, where she completed her training contract with Chartered Accountants Ireland and also qualified as a tax consultant. Um, and there she progressed to tax manager. So then Fiona made the move to industry and she joined Apple Green PLC as tax manager. And in September 2019, she joined her current company, Cartroller, where she um, was tax manager. And then very recently, in February this year, Fiona was promoted to head of tax with Cartroller. So welcome, Fiona, finally getting to you. Um, thank you so much for, for being with us here today. What an impressive career to date. It's even just calling it out there. It's, it's amazing. And we're really delighted and looking forward to, I guess, hearing it in your own words. So maybe maybe at this point, I'll hand over to you and let you explain a little bit about your journey so far. Yeah, thanks, Aideen. And uh, thanks for Chartered Accountants for hosting this. And um, hi to everyone. Yeah, like, uh, you know, you, you've uh, referenced my journey there. It's a pretty traditional route, studying accounting in college um, and going on to do the master's um, and then joining KPMG to do my tax exams and to do my accounting qualification. For me, it was really important to do both, actually, um, albeit that I was going into a tax function. In KPMG, I joined uh, SimTax, which is Consumer Industrial Markets. And I was lucky enough, I had a really kind of broad base of clients when I joined. Um, so anything from like high net worth individuals, um, small to medium sized kind of owner managed private businesses, and then to large PLC. So I got a really broad um, spectrum of clients, which is really important to me. I didn't, albeit I was specializing in tax, I didn't want to kind of go down one route and be, uh, you know, uh, specialize in one area of tax. I did want that broad base. I probably knew um, I would end up in industry at some point in my life. So I, I always had that in mind. Um, I had a good broad base of, of all taxes as well, you know, like capital taxes, income tax, um, corporation tax, etc. So uh, it was, you know, really good experience and really good mentors in there. Um, did my, my three years, um, got all my exams, you know, had the decision then of whether I'd stay on or, or, you know, make the move to industry at that point or, or what did I want to do. 
Um, I actually uh, I was quite close to Kate Flanagan in Pardon and I had a conversation with her um, as I was coming out of contract about that and actually from talking to Kate and looking at the roles that were there at the time I decided it actually wasn't the right time for me um, and Kate kind of agreed she was like you know what stay on um, and become manager and KPMG were brilliant as well I had wanted to go traveling so that you know they said it's absolutely no problem stay on become manager and go traveling so I did that um, after my contract and got promoted to manager was there for a few months and uh, off I went traveling the world for nine months uh, came back to KPMG I was probably really unsettled when I came back uh, I found it really hard to settle back into kind of what I'd been doing for the previous four years at that point I was like I, I need a change and this is the right time to make the move into industry and again um, through Kate I actually came across the role in Apple Green um, and yeah, it was a really interesting interview there. I was going to be the first tax hire in Apple Green. So, you know, was looking at, okay, you know, what would tax be responsible, responsible for taking over, you know, what, designing what the tax function would do. Um, definitely a baptismal of fire going into that environment and um, taking on responsibility for tax in a PLC. But really, really interesting. And like, I mean, I was there for about, just under 20 months and it was like incredible experience and exposure um, at the time Apple Green had just uh, we were involved in a transaction where they were uh, acquiring a big group in the UK as a part of that there was a refinancing and we were managing all like the due diligence of that um, we there was the, the company actually had to re-IPO <laughs> as a part of all that transaction and then we had to account for all that so with that um, really good experience and I was really fortunate and um, we had a brilliant team there in, in the finance function and um, there was a lot of acquisitions going on in the US as well so really good exposure and then you kind of probably why did I leave well um, it was actually I knew the the finance director in Cartroller and um, he had actually hired me in Apple Green and uh, had got in touch with me and said there was a role um, in Cartroller and would I be interested so, you know, after a, a bit of back and forth about that, I was like, yeah, look, this is the right time. Um, different industry, I probably didn't have a lot of exposure to the tech side of the industry. So, so this is good opportunity, different tax issues. So then I joined um, their care order in September 2019. Had a pretty, you know, I'd say quiet standard six months uh, pre-COVID, you know, was just getting kind of embedded, understanding the processes, you know, what are the issues, how we might go about addressing them and thinking about like where we wanted to take tax um, over the next couple of years. COVID hit, really impacted the business. Uh, so we had um, quite a, a busy period throughout probably March, April, May, June, as, and we got new investors on board. So, and with that, I was kind of working very closely with the CFO. So I think when we got to the end of all that, um, we had a bit of a rejig in finance and it just made sense for me to report to the CFO. And with that came to sort of the approach into head attack. So that's where I am now. Fantastic. Wow. It's all, all a lot going on the last few years. You've been <laughs> quite busy, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Um, so just to look, I guess you've given us a good bit of detail, but just to delve a little bit further into the different roles and how you found the transition, I suppose, first of all, like, you know, your time in, in KPMG and training as an accountant, it's a lot, it's a very busy time and doing the exams and everything. How did you find your time there um, during your training contract? Yeah, like busy is the word. I think you look back now, like looking back now, you know, you're in a bit of a bubble um, yeah. and you don't realize because your network at that time is the people you train with, the people in your intake, especially in KPMG, we probably about 30 in our intake that you're dealing with on a day to day basis uh, and they're all doing it. So you nearly know no different. Uh, until yeah talking to someone you know uh, who's doing something completely different or you're talking to your family and they're going what are you doing you've been working all week and you're going to college all weekend but you know it was a really good experience um, and like the network that I developed probably from my time and those couple of years in KPMG like have really stood to me now I still talk to the majority of my intake um, probably weekly month less so at the minute with COVID I think we're all a bit drained uh, from texting and being on screens all the time but yeah no like I, I've really good networks from my time in KPMG I had 
quite a good director uh, who went into partner as well, who, you know, was really supportive and I got a lot of opportunities as a result of that. But like, it's a busy time, but you get out of it, I think, what you put into it. So, you know, like, I worked really hard during that time, but I'm now a qualified accountant, a qualified tax advisor, and I hopefully, uh, you know, don't have to do any more exams for the rest. Of- <laughs> Absolutely, that's that's the plan. I know that's great, and it is. That's the thing. It's so hard when you're in that bubble. I think to even, you know, that's why hopefully these webinars are really helpful for people because it is hard to see what else is going on, but you do get so much from us from the training and the you know, learning what it's like in a professional environment, but also, as you say, the network you build, I think that's worth more than than anything. So good to hear that from you as well. Um, and then look, obviously your next, you, you made the move into um, industry and you went to Apple Green. Um, what would you, like, what were your biggest challenges? It sounds like there was a lot going on. You were the first tax hire. How did you find it? Like, it's obviously a big change from practice into industry. And I think that's, a lot of people's fear they don't know what to expect going into industry were there any major challenges or how did you find the transition yeah th- there's probably two big challenges that come to mind and um, when i think of when i made the move initially i suppose go, for my position I, in both my roles at the minute i went in as uh, the only tax person so you know very niche very specialized and I lost that sounding board, you know, you're in KPMG and you're looking at an issue or, you're, uh, you know, trying to do something for a client. You, you turn the chair around, you go, God, what do you think of this? Or, or uh, you know, yeah. it makes sense. Um, but again, that's like, I, I owe a lot of people a lot of coffees and drinks from my network because when I did move, you know, I was able to rely on them and to give them a shout going like, what do you think? Um, you know, should I be worried about this or, or what do I do in this scenario? So like, again, it's it's coming back to that network. It was key for me. Yeah. I made that move. Um, the other bit that kind of stands out to me is, is putting the advice into practice. So you know, I'm, I'm off calls here about like how we implement a new process uh, for certain things. So you're, you're taking that that technical knowledge you've learned and going, well, actually, how do you put it into practice? Because that's what you have to do. You have to develop the processes to, um, you know, get these things like if if you're talking about VAT or you're making sure that VAT is, is recorded like automatically through your system that sort of thing and um, it becomes quite hard because you're now out of the legislation and out of books and into systems and trying to understand how they work and yeah it, it becomes mind-boggling but really really interesting as well good yeah there's a lot to take on and like you say especially in standalone roles it's 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 a tough time i would imagine but fair play you've obviously um come out the other end and, and come through it and and just then, since you've joined Cartroller, like, you know, you've obviously mentioned it and I alluded to it as well. That was a very quick transition. And I know I, 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 it sounds like you're a bit modest about how the how, how you got the, the head of tax role. But, you know, how, how did that all evolve or how, how did your your time during, you know, from tax manager moving to head of tax? And um, how has that journey been? Yeah. Like, I suppose it is a factor, like the, the promotion was a factor of, of everything we've done in the last 12 months. I mean, a, a travel company, uh, COVID, it, it's just been a mad 12 months. Now we've come out the, the other end and we're stronger and so ready for the opportunities um, when travel comes back and we can already see that. Uh, the transition is interesting, I suppose. The bit for me is I'm getting more out of tax and I'm thinking more about strategically about how the business is run. When I got promoted to head of tax, I joined this, um, what we call the extended leadership team. So it's kind of, you know, you have your senior management and then the next step and you're seeing the decisions being made across the business, what projects the priority or what projects to go after, what opportunities that we should prioritize, this sort of stuff. So it's probably stepping away from, okay, here's the day-to-day compliance piece, but more into that strategic piece of how a company is run. And that's great, like that leadership experience and um, like working quite closely and reporting to the CFO is really interesting. And you get such interesting insights as to, you know, how the business is run, how, how to think about things, um, looking at, you know, if we have some change in legislation, how that feeds through and how we communicate that to the, to the appropriate um, stakeholders in the business. So it's definitely interesting. 
That's great. And it's it, you obviously had to kind of step up yourself and get involved in those things. Um, so it's it's um it's a, a testament to to your work, but it's really good to be involved. I'm sure in all the the decision making and the strategy and and seeing what's going on. Um, and I suppose even leading on from that, I mean, are there any obviously when you move to industry and when you're uh you know qualifying as an accountant, you build up your core, whether it's technical tax or accounting experience, and that kind of happens naturally in practice, I guess, but. Are there any other skills that you think are really important for accountants who are maybe making the move to industry or looking to progress their career? You know, any any other kind of skills that we might not think of normally that you can you can think of? Yeah, like I, I think probably the key skill, especially within, a, a, I think, a tax role is your ability to communicate. Um, yeah and very concisely as well I mean you're taking something very technical and you're dealing with people who you know are not accountants who uh, are you know are not in that level of detail and you you need to extract the relevant information and relay that to them in an understandable manner and I think that's the biggest compliment we probably you can get from across the businesses Fiona breaks things down makes it very simple to understand and I know what I have to do and I think like that's so key, whether you're a tax, you know, uh, auditing, uh, whatever it is, whatever the role is, is being able to communicate that and being able to communicate the relevant information to the appropriate stakeholders. The other one that I probably see from working, like I work obviously very closely within um, all the various aspects of the finance function and always has been. Um, while I'm alone, I'm not really alone because, you know, I have colleagues that I work very, very closely with when I'm doing anything. But I think making that move initially, it's it's the ability to take ownership and to self-review your work as well. Uh, you, in practice, you're used to a review process and, you know, a, a note might get reviewed three times or an email might get reviewed a couple of times before it goes anywhere. Um, you move into industry and you, you take on a lot more responsibility on your day-to-day -day work, whether it's like mundane tasks. So, you, you know, you might not have someone reviewing it. So you really got to take the ownership for those and run with them and um, and make sure you're, you're, you're self-reviewing yourself. Yeah, absolutely. They're, both of those points are really well made. I've heard, you know, lots of people saying that's often the struggle, you know, after leaving practice, if you've been in, in a firm for a good number of years and even just being amongst all tax people, or if you're in audit, all auditors, you're not used to that dealing with people outside of your 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 close circle and having to do say the translation as you say into normal uh, terms and um, so it's it's the advantage is obviously that you you get to see things from a different perspective but it is just to be to be kind of um i suppose savvy enough to know that you need to change your way of doing things a little bit probably compared to if you were in practice so yeah. And, and the self-review thing, I think that's a huge thing compared to practice. Um, even I, I was briefly in industry and as you say, you're used to maybe three people signing something off before it goes out and all of a sudden you're the one and the book stops there. So a uh, really, really good point. Um, and so I suppose just changing tact a little bit and, you know, you know, I suppose people, the audience here are probably thinking about their next move and you you speak very highly of car trawler. It sounds anytime I've I've been chatting to you, it sounds like a really nice place to work. Um what what would you say for someone, a recently qualified accountant, um, what would it be like on the car trawler team? Yeah, so within our finance function um in Caratrawler, I suppose th there's a, a number of different avenues you can go down. So we have a commercial finance team, which do like FP&A, uh, budgeting process, and then we have our um, business partnering relationships and uh, supporting the rest of the business. From there, then like you have financial reporting roles, treasury, um, there's tax, finance transformation. I suppose in Caratrawler in the last three or four years, we've, we've really been investing into the finance function and really building it out. And we, we talk um, about best in class finance function and what that looks like. And that's obviously what we're striving for. Um, like 
at the minute it's, it's just really interesting projects like if you look at what we were doing in the last 12 months we've been through a, a due diligence we brought new investors on board and I mean that that the entire finance functions involved in that whether it's providing information and um, making sure it, you know it, it's clear and the, you're not getting asked loads of questions on it um, uh, and you know you're showing what we do and how we're set up it, there's a really nice culture and I suppose the one thing I really love about Car Trawler is, is the focus on continuous improvement. So like coming in and if you have ideas about something that, you know, this way, this process could be done better or, you know, have you thought about this? There is that, that kind of leeway to go, yeah, you know, we're happy to go after it. What, how do you think, you know, what do you think, how do you do it? Like one of the things I'm really interested in is um, like learning and development. So I do a bit of lecturing uh, like myself uh, and we have a few people that are going through and doing exams at the minute. So I, I kind of brought in a bit of a support for them and exam support. And, you know, when I said it to the FD and the CFO, they were like, yeah, bring in what, what you think will work. And, you know, so it's really it's a bit of a passion project of mine but I was just left off to, to do it and uh, they were supporting me obviously but uh, yeah it's just really really interesting so I think I love that kind of focus on you know, we can always change things and do things better and um, everyone can bring you know bring what they want to the team. Fantastic that's, that's great to hear and it is probably relatively unique you know especially in bigger organizations it can be hard to, to bring change so that's that's really nice to hear. Um, and and Fiona, just if you were, say you were on the other side of this webinar now and you were watching in trying to figure out your, your career moves and what you'd do next, any tips that you would give yourself as a newly qualified accountant, whether trained in tax or other areas, but and any tips you would give yourself? Yeah, there's probably a few, like... <laughs> I was thinking about this one and it's a it's a hard one because we're all so individual but like some of the things that come to mind when I look back and the opportunities that I maybe passed my way and I didn't take them up so like in KPMG uh, there used to be this like tax trek offer where you could go and work in another office for um, three to six months in a different country you know so like taking those opportunities or, or maybe putting my hand up for things like secondments you know if you are coming out of contract and you're eager to maybe see something different when well, you could always dip your toe in the water and try a secondment. So, you know, telling your manager or your director, look, I'm actually kind of interested in, in something different. Would there be any secondments? Put your hand up and like, don't be worried about that. Like that's about like making a mistake or, or um, you know, like I, what I would say is get as much experience as you can where you are um, and don't be worried about you know making a mistake with a, a career move or something like that and um, you, you're young coming out of contract you have your whole life ahead of you uh, to, to kind of embed uh, your roles and like just get as much experience as you can when you're coming out of contract it's the opportunity to to try different things so don't be afraid to do that absolutely yeah we we would say that to people too i think often there's a fear you know, your first move after your training contract, if you do decide to leave your firm, you know, people are so worried that it has to be right and this is the big move. Realistically, you know, you've had a nice block of experience in your training contract. So even if your next role, if you do it for two or three years and you change your mind or you move to something else, I think it's not, you know, it, it just looks like you are expanding your experience. And like you say, you know, maybe it's a good time to try a secondment or try something different within the firm if you're not sure what direction to go yeah. in. So, yeah, I think that's really good, um, good advice. Um, and Fiona, if you were if you were hiring and you were looking at CVs, I suppose something that we often find and candidates would ask us a little bit about is, you know, a lot of people, if you train, maybe I suppose taking Big Four, for example, a lot of people will have quite similar CVs. So, you know, when you trained in KPMG, there were a few people coming out of training contracts at the same time and your CVs can end up looking quite similar. Um, so is, is there anything in particular that you would look out for in a recently qualified CV or anything that would stand out to you? Yeah, and 
this probably came up when I made that move to Apple Green was like how I know they interviewed quite a number of candidates for the role and I suppose looking back I know why they picked me and it was because with my CV I had tailored you know I'd done my research on the company and it probably tailored my experience so I knew they were um you know looking at some acquisitions so mm-hmm. kind of hammering out the the M&A type work I would have done you know, I would have had a little bit of exposure to VAT and, and to other taxes, you know, so it's it's about like, you know, bringing those out. So let's say if you're, you know, even um, you're coming out of audit and you're going into a property company and you have a bit of IFRS 16 experience, like make sure that that is standing out. So like tailoring your CV to that role is so important and probably a lot of candidates don't do it. And um, so really, yeah. you know, trying to understand, is there anything in that role that is specific that you can really you know highlight your experience in that area um i think personality like it's such a huge bit i mean in care we, we really focus on the culture of it of, of the company and like making sure that any new hire will fit in with our team will fit in with the culture so you know do like have a bit of personality in your cv as i said the technical experience will, will kind of it's it is what it is but like show what are you into outside of work? Have you done something mad? Have you gone traveling? I remember when I did my interview at Apple Green, we started for about 10, 15 minutes talking about traveling because the two uh, interviewers who had been traveling and were like, oh, did you go to this place? And it just immediately, well, one, it settled me into the discussion and two, just started, it created that rapport when we got into the interview stage. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's that you want to make a common bond and have something just to to chat about but um but that's a good point on the cv as well sometimes people take it for granted that oh sure you know i'm in tax so everyone knows i do corporate tax and i do a bit of income tax but it's actually not always the case and i suppose it is important to look at a job spec and say okay what what do i have what can i actually add into my cv and to change it a bit um depending on the role tailoring it i think that's a really good really good tip um and I was going to ask you, but you probably hit on it there with the interviews, you know, again, I guess it's about personality and, you know, is there anything in interviews that I suppose would stand out, but it's, it's probably that cultural fit and trying to build a bit of rapport. Is there anything else with interviews that you would look out for? Yeah, really, I think number one is the personality piece. I mean, if you've been caught to interview, generally, there might be a few technical questions, um, but, you know, it's probably because they're kind of confident that actually, you know, you have the technical skills. It's about now seeing uh, your personality. Also probably your communication skills. Um, yeah. How do you portray yourself? How do you, you know, talk to the points that you've been asked about? That's really, really important. Um, I suppose like I've do- done a, quite a number of interviews being the interviewer. And I think one key thing that a lot of people mightn't pick up is that when the interviewers start doing a lot of talking, they've generally moved into sale mode <laughs> and to recognize that because, you know, like that's where now they're going, they've agreed, um, you know, there's always a sign, there's always a sign or a question that they've agreed in advance like, okay, if we get to this, this means I'm really happy. So let's start kind of bigging up the role, the company, whatever it is. And to recognize that as well and use that as your opportunity, you know, to, to, to kind of, you know, uh, bolster yourself I suppose it's a good yeah it's a good point and and it is something that it sometimes can be hard to read but I guess that's where you kind of know maybe you have a chance to ask a few more questions and get a bit a bit more out of it um and in that regard I suppose any anywhere you've seen where someone has particularly kind of left themselves down you know or any any areas where people need to watch out for like that yeah, um, oh God, there's one interview that comes to mind and like that, really good rapport at the start, but the person just got too comfortable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it just went the opposite way and um, got kind of more personal than should have, like uh, completely ended the interview in a terrible way. They just got too comfortable, like stay professional, whatever happens <laughs> when you're doing your interview, you know, um, definitely Absolutely. a building rapport, but a professional rapport. I think the other big thing where candidates um, struggle is confidence. Like, just, you know, if you can't sell yourself in that, you know, 45 an hour interview, then 
you know, why should they hire you? Like it's your opportunity to sell, sell, sell. So you, you really need to practice that. And that when you get in there, that you're really portraying your confidence. Obviously there's just like that fine line between too confident. Um, yeah. As well, I think, you know, being underconfident, you know, you just, you won't come across well. Yeah, I think it is, it's, to be honest, it's about practicing and, and getting comfortable. There's certain questions that you know will come up. So things like, tell us about your experience to date even though it's probably the most basic question of the interview I always say to people it's probably the most important one because you know you're going to get asked it and if you're not confident talking about your own experience as you say why why would they hire you so it's it's just important to, to pick those things up and definitely the, the being a little bit too relaxed that thing it, it can be an issue so it's, it's always to stay professional I think that's another really 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 good point and um, Okay, and I know uh, you've kind of touched on this a little bit when, when you were chatting earlier about your um, your move to industry initially, but it's a question we get asked a lot in, in Barden, and, you know, I suppose it's hard to, to give advice because I, I personally, I think it's a very, you know, it's an individual decision. It depends on people's long-term plans and what they enjoy and everything, but you know, the whole, do I stay in practice after qualifying or do I go straight to industry? So you obviously stayed on until tax manager. Um, some people would say, you know, go straight to industry, but have you any view on that? Or do you think there's a right or wrong? Yeah, I, I grappled with that one um, quite a lot, actually, when I was coming out, because uh, I was like, OK, if I know I, I'm not going to stay, um, let's say if I, I don't see myself on the partner track in, in the big four, well, should I just move now? And I think actually the, there's probably an answer for tax and there's an answer for audit, because I think coming out of audit, there is just a mass exodus after contract, but there are more roles. And from an audit experience, you're not going to come out of practice into a finance manager role generally. They look for industry experience beforehand. So you know you need a couple of years industry experience, understanding a system, understanding month end processes is quite different. From a tax, I think the answer is a little bit different. Looking back to my decision, like I really enjoyed the work I was doing in, in KPMG. I had really good exposure. Um, I knew I was going to be promoted to manager and I knew that was going to like really um, help me and I was doing being promoted to manager within KPMG was really helpful because I had really good mentors ahead of me that supported me through that, you know, because um, mm -hmm. it's a big adjustment moving from, you know, just being the, the senior to actually looking after someone's performance review and managing those conversations and having those difficult conversations. So it was really, really lucky that I had some good mentors to support me through that. I think as well with tax, you know, there's really good tax manager roles in industry. So it's easier to make the transition um, directly into a tax manager role in an industry perspective from from your, your practice to industry. So I think that's why it's easier to stay on. But like at the end of the day, yeah, you, you have to kind of take a personal ownership here. If you're if you're not enjoying what you're doing, then you know it's not the right move for you to stay there either. So you have to really assess it and go, okay, if I'm enjoying the work, well, should I stay on for a little bit what longer and then make the move to industry and I can get into a manager role very quickly into industry. But if I'm not enjoying it, you're better off being in a place that you're getting experience that you enjoying and that you want. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's very well said. It is it is true that it is a little bit different with tax and um I think we would see that a bit. And it's look, there's so many different things you have to consider. The market at the time, like even yeah. Over the last 12 months, the market has been quite different. Um, but 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 still it is important, I suppose, to for everyone to think of their own situation and, and what they enjoy and where they see themselves long term. And also what I found quite a bit lately, I don't know if you know anyone, Fiona, who's been in this boat, but you know, I have seen people who've gone to industry and come back to practice. So it's not that yeah. you can't make the move, you know, the other way as well. Um so again, going back to our point earlier about your first move after your training contract it's not the be all and end all you can change again and and move around but it's all about getting experience and and seeing what's right for you i guess um so just one other question then i was going to ask you 
I suppose, is there any particular experience um, that you think, Fiona, that um, a qualified or a recently qualified accountant or a tax consultant should look to get in, say, you know, maybe their first five years after qualifying? Is there anything in particular, whether they stay in practice or move to industry, but is there anything that's really important, do you think? Yeah, I th think people management skills. Um, so getting into a role where you actually are managing employees is like, it, it's huge both in practice and industry is that, you know, you can you can demonstrate that you're bringing people along with you. Um, you know, that you're, you're bringing up the next line of talent so that then actually they can take your position and you can move on and get involved in other things and take on other opportunities. But just, you know, being able to, to bring talent with you and to deal with those. I think as you get into the more senior roles, you know, a lot of time is spent with just managing people and, and uh, across the organization. Like, I think it's about getting as much as experience as possible. You know, like you gotta be probably looking at your CV every six months and go, you know, in the last six months have I done work that I can make a note about in my CV that I can talk about? And if the answer to that is no, then, you need to be starting to think about okay well what um what should i be doing you know do, do i need to either you know start putting my name in for other types of projects where, where i am do i actually have i reached the end of where i am and do i need to move on and like it can be a, a bit of a, a lateral move as well you know i i went from tax manager in apple green to tax manager in car trawler um but for me, the experience I was getting was a different industry, completely different issues um, and tax heads and considerations. So, uh, you know, it's paid off for me in, in, and I'm adding to the CV around that. So like definitely, you know, being able to look at your CV objectively and go, am I adding to this? Can I talk about the experience I'm getting? And if I'm not, then, you know, is it time to, to move on or, or think about something different? That's a really, really good point. And I think, not just um, looking at wh when you're thinking of making a move, but also if you're at stage of moving and looking at job specs, thinking, will this job get me something extra on my CV? Like you say, it's not all about title, you know? So yeah. even though it might be a tax manager to a tax manager role, the roles can be so different and, and give you something. So we would always say that as well. Think about, you know, if I make this move, Am I adding value to my CV? Am I gaining new experience? Um, that's, yeah, that's a really, really good point. Um, so I think we just have one question um, here on the, the Q&A. If anyone else has any questions, you might send them through. Um, so Fiona, I'll just read this one out. Um, so someone has asked, in the FAE year of my exams, um, and I really want to do tax, did it in college and find it very interesting and from the exams I excel at it. I've chosen the elective this year but unfortunately there doesn't seem to be any immediate progression available until I finish my contract, two and a half years more. Any advice finding myself deciding between moving to pursue what I'm interested in and sticking it out but taking much more time? So I guess they mean that they're not getting to actually work in tax is, is my understanding but trying to do it in the exams um i, I think that's that's what the question is um fiona i don't know do you have any advice there so um i i think from reading for from listening to that Aideen, this person maybe is interested in getting into tax but doesn't currently work in it yeah um, like you know you don't necessarily have to have tax experience to work in the tax function. I definitely know people that have made that um, that pivot into it. I, you know, before I was hired in Apple Green, actually the financial reporting manager was was responsible for tax. And um, you know, currently in Cartoller, before I joined, there was a period where the head of finance was responsible for tax. And um, you know, so you can make that pivot. Like we're looking at roles currently um, for someone to report to, to me, uh, and I. It, like tax is isn't necessary for the role, especially as you move into industry, and um, mm -hmm. because you're 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 working so closely with the other finance teams, you're working on on different systems, you're working on implementation, you're working with people across the business. I think you can often learn um, on on the job uh, around the tax and that side of things. Like I think there's a, a bit around progression, and um, that person had mentioned there. Uh, 
that's a hard one. I mean, it's hard to kind of progress when you actually are in your training contract. I suppose it's just around the experience you're getting again. Are you dealing with different clients? Are you getting different types of projects? And if not, can you put your hand up for those types of projects? That's it. Yeah, I think a lot of the time it's like you kind of said earlier, even seeing the opportunity when maybe there's something different you can get involved in, putting your hand up, telling people that, look, this is something you're pursuing and um, there will be scope to, to get into into tax down the line. It's just probably difficult during the training contract to pivot. Um, yeah. But I, I do think it's important to probably stick or, you know, with the exams to do what you enjoy. That's that's always important. Yeah. And um, we had just have another question there. Um, so this person is working in VAT um, and they only have exposure to VAT. Will this make it more difficult to find work in industry if I want to leave practice? Yeah, it's a, it's a hard one. So like for me in the roles I've gone into, I've had to be able to demonstrate a broad base. Um, I know of people like that have come from VAT specialisms and definitely gone into roles either directly into VAT and then have used that again as a way to, to pivot out of VAT. Um, so like it, it depends on the types of roles you're looking for in the companies you can go in. Like what I'd probably say to that person is that if they're staying in, in their current role, is there any way they could put their hand up to be involved in projects that are just not VAT specific or to, you know, to work closely with another team, maybe around corporate tax or, um, you know, income tax or whatever it might be, just to, just to get a bit more experience. When I went in, um, like I didn't have a lot of VAT experience, which like in the roles I'm in now, I would say half my roles are VAT, um, being a process tax and trying to make sure that VAT and sales tax and all that are accounted for correctly. Um, but I was, you know, you, I think being able to demonstrate as well, look, I, I can uh, take in all this technical material and I can learn pretty quickly on the job um, as well. But, you know, if you can get any type of experience uh, that you can talk to at an interview, I think that would be really important. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Like, so there's, there's definitely options. It's probably just to either put your hand up in your current firm and, and get, gain some experience, some other experience if you can. Or like you say, you know, if you if you do, if you're not enjoying that and do want to get into another area in industry, it can be a good way to get into industry. Like there are lots of VAT roles in industry. Yeah. So there wouldn't be any issues getting into a VAT role in industry, I would imagine. It's more if you're trying to pivot out of it, sometimes it's easier to do that when you're in a role rather than going from yeah. straight from a VAT role straight into a pure corporate tax role. So it's there's always ways. It's just you have to, I suppose, um, you know, figure out and, and, and adjust as required and show your adapt that you're adaptable and that yeah. you have transferable skills. Like you say, Fiona, if you can show you've tried different things um even in your current firm, that will that will look really well and, and be very favorable, I think. So um so yeah, I think that covers our questions. So um I think we're 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 pretty good for today. Fiona, thank you so much. It's been really fantastic to have you here and to hear all, you know, how you've how you've gotten to where you are today. Um and also um just to hear your advice and and what you would suggest for people in you know coming out of their training contracts trying to figure out what to do there's no right or wrong I don't think for anyone we all we all know that but it is nice to hear other people's experiences and um, and I think it's, it's really valuable so I do think that the audience here are going to come away with some really valuable insights and hopefully it will help them with their future careers so um thank you to everyone for joining we'll we'll be back next week with another webinar um, and we'll be speaking to Neve Cunningham. She's Senior Manager, Finance and Strategy International with Square. Um, thanks again so much, Fiona, and, and thanks to Cara Trawler for making today happen. We're very grateful. Um, and also thanks to Ruth and the CASI Committee for bringing the series to life. And thank you to everyone for joining today. We hope you've really enjoyed it and hope everyone has a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.